Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Real with Juan Martinez. And Stephanie Ray. Man, Stephanie, you know what? It's been a little bit, right? I mean, the shows have been going, right? Yeah. We, we actually, you know, I had the whole anniversary thing mm -hmm. with my wife, so we, I kind of left. And then immediately like, after rest, that. Rest, refreshed. Re rested that. and refreshed. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, I feel like all of a sudden I need rest again, you know? <laughs> it's kind of one of those things. And, uh, and then all of a sudden when I got back, you took off. Yeah. And so, um, how was that? How was oh, Colombia? It was great. It was Come great. on. It was so good to see some family for a short little trip and, you know, spend some time out there and yeah. uh, enjoy, you know, the mountains. And what all was that. like the one thing that you would say on that trip was super dope? Um, I would say riding horses down the mountains. That was like my favorite part. Yeah. Up and down the mountains. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and, was and getting to like hear my family. I shared this like at, at the staff meeting yeah, yeah. last week. You know, getting to hear my family that they watch online. Wow. And I didn't even know because that's Col not even their language. Colombia, <laughs> they out there representing. Hey, yeah. but you know, I got so. I mean, were you like galloping or were you like? I mean, were you like the no, this both. You know, both. You, oh, both. Yeah? yeah, you're that girl. You're yeah. like you gonna ride. Oh, yeah, okay. I like riding. That's yeah, what's yeah, up. Okay, so that's cool. So that was cool. Now, um, we have some shout outs. Some people wrote us letters, man. I, we were so appreciative of all the letters you write. Um, the people that comment. You know, we're on the radio, uh, in Houston. Big shout out to Dallas because we're on the radio in Dallas yep. uh, and also in Austin. And so we're just honored to be able to bring the gospel, mm -hmm. the good news, hot topics, keeping it real yep. on This Is Real. And so Some great advice and conversation. Yeah. So we want to send a special shout out to uh, Brother Jesse Rodriguez Brother over Jesse. at Connolly Unit, man. Come Thank on. you so much for writing us. We're praying for you and, and sending you love and encouragement as well as uh, Brandon Swearingen all the way in styles. Man, we I like the way it. you said that. Let's yeah. say that there. Let's say that one more time. That, I mean, that was pretty <laughs> dope. It almost sounded like you were going to say, I swear, but then you're swearing gin. <laughs> Brandon Swearingen. I'm Brandon assuming. Swearingen. Come on. <laughs> That's how you pronounce his last name, man. That's we cool. thank you so much for writing and sharing with us your thoughts and your prayer requests and all of the above. Just know that we, you know, we read every single letter that um, yeah. comes in. And so we're sending you guys love and, and encouragement. And, and a team, I believe they're actually getting something back too, yeah. right? Um, for, I know that we're trying to also get books in all the prisons, you know, so for every book that gets bought out of the latest book that I wrote, we're giving a book away. So I think the next units are Beto unit, I believe, yes. right? Beto and um, Cofield. Cofield. Yes. Yeah, man. I'm and like, so, you know, we're not going to mount 106 <laughs> prisons. We're going to be down to 102 prisons. So uh, the best way you can do that is keep buying books. Yeah, make sure you go visit yep. uh, JuanMartinez.tv and get yep. your copy of Beyond the Yellow Brick Road where you get to dive in deeper into unlocking the promises of God. And just know everywhere books are sold, you're able to purchase one. Yeah. Whether you're purchasing one for yourself or you're gifting one to a friend, on our end, you know, Pastor Juan's mission is to put mm -hmm. a book in the hand of every single person that's uh, locked up behind bars in the state of Texas. Yeah. So we want to reach that goal. And you're, Tell your family. You're supporting write out. that. If you, yeah. if you like, write your family. You know, we're actually Tell selling yeah. boxes now of books. So we're selling them at a, you know, by the box. Yeah, we've people got lots are sponsoring. of people telling us that, hey, yeah. you know what? I want to hand them out over here where I'm at. Yeah. So how can I get a box? So if you're interested in all of that, please visit JuanMartinez.tv. Yeah. And send us. And you know what? Now I'm going to do something a little crazy. And I don't know how I'm going to get this in per person but if they're if you're out there and you're you know you're incarcerated or you're in a because uh, we also did men's and women's homes right. you know just people who are struggling or stuck you know write us a letter write us a letter you'll mm -hmm. hear that at the end and uh, let us know where you're at and uh, you never know maybe uh, we'll send you a book come mm -hmm. on we'll send Amen. you a book it's all about getting the, setting the captives free, right? Not Amen. just the ones yeah. incarcerated, but the ones who've created bars within themselves. Yep. And right. so we want to help you, them see, you know what I mean? And so, you know, today we have an incredible show with all the stuff going on. Yeah, we've been uh, having a great conversation. Yeah, and I mean, you see, the, the today I had a like, uh, you know. <laughs> his fit. Like, We're going to describe like, his fit for those uh, who are I feel are like listening. I had to, you know, I had to rock some young vibes. Going. Young vibes. That's young it. Vibes. That's yeah. it. I tell my wife all the time, I'm a college student. I throw on a backpack <laughs> and instantly I'm like, I'm a college student. She's like, whatever. There's many styles. Styles to Pastor Juan. There's That's the, it. you know, I'm preaching you know. style. There's the kicking it style. That's it. Just depends Today's where you're going. The, Come on. I'm young style. So. Today, that's it. I got the hat to the back, the, the jean hat. jacket. Uh -huh. Come on. Jean I got jacket the, over the, the hoodie. The hoodie. The kickies. The kickies. The kickies. The kickies. The kickies. <laughs> <laughs> I made it cute. Oh, I got the helican <laughs> hoodie too. Never mind. Never mind. Not that I went from dope to like, oh, how cute are the kickies? Oh, he looks so cute in his kickies. Oh my God. And you know why I did this? You know why I did this? <laughs> I did this because, um, you know, every week we have topics and, you know, we've been talking about starting where you are and right. we've talked to adults about starting where you are. Mm -hmm. You had Aaron talking about mm -hmm. starting where you are and we've talked about Beyond the Olympic Road, but today, right. you know, we got, we got youth 
pastors, generation pastors in the building. Woo, woo. Come on. And I'm excited about that, man. Um, we got pastors Mark and Sharia. Woo. Right? Woo. That, What's up, come guys? on. Hey, man, what are you guys? You guys have, let me tell you something. I had to pull out the sway. <laughs> I, feel like I, I had to pull up because I'm like, I'm thinking like when you look there, you kind of look at your face. You can't, you can't. Two things that happens when you look at these guys. Yeah. You know, if you can't see them, let me tell you something. <laughs> On YouTube, you can see them, but if you're just listening to the radio or the podcast, you look at this is what happens to me i look at them and i think two things i think dang they got some style uh -huh. every time everybody it don't matter <laughs> hey the kids are in style uh -huh. if they had a parakeet the family, it'd be a style yeah, yeah, yeah family, i mean the parakeet would have a hair it don't matter <laughs> that, uh, any animal the fish it would be like with oh a you know no matter what it is they would have style and then they're fit uh -huh. so it's almost like i mean come on i, I look at sharia and someone i'm like girl this girl carrying a truck on her back i'm like <laughs> it, it's like it's incredible how you guys uh are young because a lot of times the you know, well, first of all, introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. My name is Mark Flores. I uh, serve as the Generations Pastor at Get Rap Church. So that's pretty incredible. So cool. if you're ever in the spring area, come on through. Uh, nice. And this is my amazing smoking hot wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you guys hey. 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 She goes, hey. She goes, what an introduction. I like that intro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is so funny. I was sharing with them earlier that, yeah. you know, when they first started coming and they were visiting at the church, you know, we didn't, we didn't know them, know them, right? Yeah, so yeah. we just, when we would talk about them in passing, you know, we'd always, at Pastor Juan, too, we're like, oh, you know, oh, the, the model couple. Remember yeah, the, model the model couple? couple. <laughs> yeah, the model couple. Always the model couple. You know, big shout out also to Marco, the media guy, man, who's always Marco. behind the scenes. Yes. Doing his thing. You know, today he's got that director look, man. He's been getting more serious about this thing, man. Before, you know, he's got a director's chair, you know, slapping things around. Yeah. I'm like, hey, what's going on? But, um, you know, the, the thing is that a lot of times um, when we think about um, young, mm -hmm. right? I mean, Stephanie, you're still in that bracket. Thanks. Uh, you know, well, you know, you're getting older. You're like, come <laughs> down. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Like, I mean, I know for me, you mm -hmm. know, I, I didn't live the life that you guys are living right now. And there was always this sense of like, that's when I get older, yeah. that I live like that, mm -hmm. you know, but, which right. I think is a lie and a myth, you know? So what do you guys think? Like, you know, the fact that you guys are young, you got good health, you're young, you guys are parents, and what compels you to like live for the Lord, right? Because a lot of times I think, you know, well, I'll have time for that. It's almost like, I guess the, the thought process oh, yeah. is that if you're young, mm -hmm. you could just live however and just do whatever and everything mm -hmm. goes, right? And it's like right. this wild life. But you guys are young, look great, you know, have swag, all that stuff that they say. Yeah. Is there a new word? Because I'm still on swag. Drip. Oh, okay. the drip. I'm, okay. I looked around. I'm like, somebody <laughs> throw me a word. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the drip. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't know these That's words. It. There's That's a period, it. right? Isn't this a period? Right, yeah. right. Okay, period. now, we, you know, we're going to learn <laughs> yeah. some stuff. Hey, listen, I'm period. empty. Go on. Period. No, period. Okay, so, 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 so check it out. Um, yeah, according to that, what do you think about that? And what compels you guys to, like, serve the Lord and be the way you are at such a young age? Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. You know, I will add on to this. It's, yeah. it's interesting because once, like, when you're outside of God's will for your life, like, that's what he tells you. Like, the enemy will try to lie to you and say, hey, you know, that's just for your, when you get older, right? Yeah. But I feel like once you make that decision that Jesus, like, you are Lord of my life, mm -hmm. then it flips. Because I can't tell you how many times that I've thought myself, like, man, I'm too old. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Man, I'm gonna be 35 this year. I'm only five years away from 40, and yeah. I'm like, things are getting more serious, huh? <laughs> right, right. And so, so the enemy is trying to lie to me and say, "Hey, look, you're too old. You might want to hang the hat." But you know what? Uh, what what keeps us rooted is just seeing all of the lives that are transformed. Yeah. And I'm like, look, if God can use a donkey, He can certainly use a 34 year old guy That's from cool. Houston, Texas. You know? Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. And, and so, uh, just to see lives truly being transformed uh, makes it all the more rewarding. It makes it worth it. Yeah. How about you, Sheree? Like, right? I mean, you're young. You, I mean, you could you could have that mentality mm -hmm. too. Like, I could do whatever. But like you're married, Shere is you're a younger, mom. So she's <laughs> younger, so you know. no, you're younger. a mom. <laughs> you're you're a mom of two beautiful children, right? And um, basically, you still like you love the Lord. You work out. You're constantly pouring into, uh, you know, the, the generations, mm -hmm. yeah, young women stuff. So, what compels you to do that and not really go wild? <laughs> or did you have a season where you went wild and you're like, hey, I did. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I believe it's, um, you know, I was raised in church my whole entire life. Um, nice. But I believe, you know, it was those seeds that my parents planted, 
you know, inside of inside of me. And, um, you know, I did have my moment where yeah. I wilded out. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but God definitely, I didn't, I couldn't run too far, you know, wow. couldn't run too far. And um, that's why that song, Reckless Love, yeah. rocks me every time, you know, I listen to it because I believe that, you know, he left the 99 for me to pull me back. Mm -hmm. wow. And um, like Mark said, just seeing our young people um, encounter Jesus and, um, you know, see them wreck at the altar, really, it drives, it just drives me. And um, I, I love it. Yeah. Wow. What are some of the things you would say, um, you know, being the fact with, I mean, it's chaotic out there right yeah. now, right? They're making, oh, I yeah. feel like every day they make another law that I'm like, uh, why would they do that? From the womb to <laughs> the, you know, adolescent age already, yes. you know, there's yes. so many things that are changing and different than what we experienced yeah, whenever so we were younger. things they're trying to call them thabies, thabies and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Like, I think that's crazy. Like, you, you know, at four years old, they can make decisions. You know, the guy that was doing the interview was kind of joking, like, oh, so does he pick his college and all that at four? Mm -hmm. Like, right. who makes a decision at four? I barely can make decisions now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True story. You know? True story. And so um, what are some of the things you guys see, because you guys on a day-to-day -day are always working with young, young generations, right? Like uh, children um, and then teenagers and stuff. What is something that you're seeing today that you're like is a whole lot different from when you were young? And what are some of the problems you see today? Yes, sir. Well, it's very interesting because I think as generations progress, like the struggle becomes – you know that much more intense like the fire gets heated up right it's the yeah. same it's the same battle but just different it looks different right and i remember um when i was growing up i would always hear my youth pastor talk about a fatherless generation right mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. i grew up with my father you know being president and yeah and so it didn't really make sense to me at that at that time and so fast forward 10 10 years later right uh, we are dealing with young people on a weekly and even daily basis who don't have a father an active father in their lives and so to hear them talk about just the different struggles that they face um you know i know parents when they hear about this like they're just blown away because they have no idea how much like a lack of a of a godly manly figure in their mm -hmm. life makes a world of a difference in these young people's lives and mm -hmm. so uh so now fast forward it's like you're you're seeing these young people that have to grow up without wow. that role model in their home mm -hmm. uh and maybe you know some of them see men come in and out and it's intense because now as a young person as a 12 year old as a 13 year old now you're having to take that role that you weren't really designed to at that age you know now they got to be a mother or you know they're a young guy they got to be a father right, the right. man of the house you know i've talked to many of them even this week that say you know um you know i had to get a job and help my mom out because I couldn't stand seeing her struggle or our lights got cut off or, you know, just, just so that. this show kind of turns into a men aren't being men. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, like you get insane. And you know, as you were talking, you know, I just had this random, you know, thought because, you know, I think of seed time and harvest all the time. Right. You know, I, I look at life that way, you know, seed time and harvest. I look at my wife as a garden. I look at my children like a garden, you know, and what my, my employees, everything I look like mm -hmm. from a garden perspective, what am I, what kind of harvest do I want from that relationship? And it, then I utilize the word of God or the seed, right. you know, to be that. Right. So it can be heavenly. Right. 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 Um, but I was hearing you talk and uh, you were talking and I was thinking because all, you said your youth pastor always talked about a, a fatherless generation. Correct. And I believe that that's been happening now for a long time. Now, right. it's crazy because even now we still have a fatherless generation, but every year it gets worse, you were saying. Right. And that's because I believe like this generation who didn't have fathers, they're experiencing things yeah. that it's like a seed time, you know, mm. and it's being planted. And as w the harvest that we're seeing now is from all those generations who did not have a father, yeah. exactly. who they were forced to live a certain way. And then mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying? So right, the more right. we can, unless we bring fathers back into the home, um, we won't reverse it. It'll get mm -hmm. worse and worse. And, yeah. and, you know, that's biblically, it sounds like we're going to get crazy. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. the fatherless are raising the fatherless. So it's like, where are they learning it from? Where are they learning it from? And mm -hmm. if they have no relationship with the heavenly father. Right. Right. Know, which that would even be hard to understand. Right. Yeah. Because when we're saying like, hey, have a relationship, you know, their equivalent or understanding of a relationship, which mm -hmm. is probably why we have so many divorces and so many bad relationships, right. mm -hmm. because... They don't really understand relationships. Sheree, mm -hmm. I see you thinking. Hit me. Yeah. 
Yes. No. Um, so, you know, you're, you're speaking on how, um, well, I'm going to fall out of this chair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <It's passion>. <laughs> <laughs> how, you know, I, I didn't really understand the, you know, fatherless generation mm-hmm. until yeah. we became youth pastors, you right. know, cause wow. I always had my, my father and he's mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. You so know? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, I am, when we became youth pastors, um, these kids really become your kids, Yeah, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and I see some of them like how they cling on to Mark sometimes yeah, and exactly. they look up to him, mm-hmm. you know, like a father. Mm-hmm. And, um, it just, it really, it touches my heart. Um, but also, um, our, our young, our young girls, um, they are struggling right now with identity yeah. and, right. um, there's, you know, a lot of mothers that are not in the picture. Right. Um, so, you know, yesterday we kind of, we had our breakout sessions and, you know, guys went with guys and girls went with girls and, you know, it, it just really, it broke my heart to just hear, um, you know, what our young women are going through, you know, feeling like they have to live a certain way because of social media Mm -hmm. or, Um, you know, I got to look like that, or I got to dress like that. I got to be, you know, I, this certain weight or, um, because I'm not accepted Mm -hmm. or, um, I even, you know, there was a, a young, a young lady, you know, saying that she had to look a certain way or her mom didn't accept her. Wow. Wow. And so I'm just like, (laughs) you know, it just, it breaks breaks you. you, It, It just, it breaks you. And so I'm, I'm very blessed. And I, I know that God, you know, has put Mark and I here, you know, um, for this time to, you know, speaking to these young, these young people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because so. I, I know for me, like, you know, uh, we're, I'm actually in process of working on a book uh, called Imperfect Dads, One Perfect Father with like the chaplain of the Chargers and like uh, Scott Silveri and Richard Bright, right? So it's awesome. all of us come from different backgrounds and stuff. And I right. was kind of just reviewing, knowing what we were going to talk about, some of the main points there. And I remember. Uh, growing up and what I would, you know, basically fathers that were like presented on TV, you know, like I would always think like, you know, TV TV (laughs) dads, you know, like the Cosby show and, you know, they were awesome shows, Mm -hmm. but they never really represented my home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So what it did to me, it was, it created kind of like this fantasy Mm -hmm. that I kind of was like, well, they don't really have, like, who has a family like that? Yeah. And who has a dog? It's not like, I, even though, like, now we have <laughs> yeah, a dog, yeah. but you got to really think, like, you know, yeah. for me, that was, like, so foreign. And mm-hmm. who, what do you mean he comes home and mm-hmm. they go here and they do this or they sit at the table and have these kind of conversations? I'm like, whatever. Yeah. Like, who does that? Like, <laughs> it's just a show. Yeah. And I'm thinking maybe if I enjoyed it so much because I had a void in my heart and really, mm-hmm. like, you know, I started you know now that i'm I'm listening and kind of just like thinking about what we talked about you know uh a lot of it involved fathers and roles of a father but that a lot of people really didn't see because i'm that guy whom um my dad left at eight and even though a stepdad stepped in i didn't really know how to receive that Mm -hmm. and um, i didn't really understand what that kind of relationship because that relationship at an early age was like smoking cigarettes drinking Mm -hmm. you know so it was more like a homeboy Mm -hmm. than it was a father who would uh not beat me to being scared you know because we think of the father like right it was more like he I believe a father doesn't crush your spirit, but he breaks your will. Mm -hmm. He breaks your desires. You know, like, Mm -hmm. I want to do this. He's like, no. You know, and it teaches you those things. And I didn't, I was just rebelled. I was already (laughs) upset, you know. And so what about you, Steph? I know you dealt with, like, youth and all that when when you're talking about generations. What is that? I I think that's that's exactly what, you know, Mark and Sherry are talking about is that so many, like Sherry was saying, that you see them cling to yeah. the pastors and you see them cling to the older, you know, people in the youth group and stuff like that. And and once you get to know them a little bit more, you understand that, you know what, they're going through so many things in their home. You know, we right. think, yeah. th- I mean, we think it's hard to figure out adult life as an adult. We'll try figuring out how to be a child and an adult while being a child, you yeah. know, and something that I've kind of like, um, seen a lot with generations was that I don't know I felt like speaking to parents too yeah. was saying that 
look, you don't understand this role. Like, I understand there's a need. You know, sometimes it is. Like, the child does have mm. to go to work and do this. Right. I'm like, but where, where possible, allow them to be a child. You know, right. allow them to be a child because unfortunately we can't change cir circumstances. You know, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. if the child has to work, that child has to work, or if the the daughter has to, you know, watch the kids. But then, as a parent, be aware of the situation, your your special circumstance, and allow them to be children in the way, and still treat them as children. You know, mm. because that's what they are. Yeah, and I think a lot of times in homes, like, um, you know. There's roles. There's that. You know, a lot of times you hear women, and I'm always trying to like correct them. And a big shout out to all the you know single moms who have to do mm -hmm. all the work, Time. but they're moms. And I think a lot of times they're like, "I'm the dad." I'm like, "No, you can't say that because you're basically you're you're creating this view of like this is what a dad looks like." And even right. though it's missing, yeah. I, I just think it's, it's not a, possible. It, yeah, it's not right. Like right. a dad saying, "I'm the mom." Like you're not the mom. You're just the dad. That mm -hmm. has to do both the You're jobs. A substitute. Right. Yeah, but it's not. You know, uh, that's where you discipline, you mentor, you teach, you nurture, and and sometimes I believe like, especially in this generation, you know, like we were sent outside. You know, I guess to play, to yeah, play yeah. And, and stuff. But yep. we only could go outside for so long, mm -hmm. and we had to come in. Um, nowadays, it's almost like we've allowed electronics to teach our children. Yeah. Uh, and, and we don't really, you know, it, you got to be careful with that because then you don't you don't spend that quality time. You don't really mentor and teach. Mm -hmm. They're learning everything at a young age. I mean, I'm addicted to a phone. I think half the right. planet is if they're mm -hmm. going to be honest. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, right. We carry it everywhere. You know, yeah. it's mm -hmm. a phone. It's like part of your body. You, mm -hmm. you know, watch out if later they try to put a phone in your hand mm -hmm. or something. But, right. you know, um, we're addicted to those things. So imagine training a child in the way it should go with a phone mm -hmm. at a young age. That means by the time they're older, they're never going to talk to people. They're going to have like a phone on their face, you know? Yeah. Right. That's yeah, so go ahead, true. Pastor Moore. No, um, as you were speaking, I just couldn't help to think but that, you know, it's so important that we raise our children and, and, and teenagers in, in godly homes and, yeah. and instill some of, yeah, at least at minimum, some of God's word into them because Fact. Uh, what I believe is that if you don't, if you don't lay this foundation, a biblical one, they're just going to be learned from <laughs> like <a> culture, <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, you're good, you're good. Uh, <laughs> They're going to, the culture is just going <laughs> to right. train them, you mm -hmm. know, and what I, we found firsthand, and it's so much more difficult to crack, break that foundation because of it's already there, you yeah. know. One and thing I, I've really realized, and you know, I think all of us share that, is that, you know, being raised in church and being in a godly home, that even though we have like those crazy years or we may do that, but like you said, those seeds that were planted as a, as a child, you know, oh those things God. you definitely like don't forget and they always bring you back, you know? So that's one thing that, you know, as, as generations pastors, I know that you guys do because so many times, you know, I've had conversations with parents where they're like, well, I can't help it. Everyone, you know, well, they all get phones at seven years old and you know right, everyone right. at their school is doing that I, sometimes i think parents think that they don't they don't have the power to affect change but i feel like it's no you're you can affect change because right. people are watching your family people are watching your kids and your kid can be the change that that school needs that right. everything you know right. it can definitely I mean, like i'm having like a laugh <laughs> attack over here <laughs> 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 I'm <just> laughing <laughs> laughing i'm like uh, you know i don't know i just, just, just a little laughing. paper pride <laughs> i just uh, i just had you know yeah. i said we oh lord grace and mercy come on oh we just <laughs> preached last night hey, drove from out of something. town that's you know commitment the, over the, here. check it out so and then, you know every now and then, look all I did, like if laughter is medicine right now, I just saved myself, uh -huh. you know, a few dollars yeah. in, in future uh, <laughs> hospital visits. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, let's let's get into some of the segments because I want to hear some sure. of the stuff. I believe like there's a lot of learning lessons when we do these segments. And so, uh, you know, you could start with that one. Yeah, because I think that's really good. Sure. So we're going to hit you guys with the struggle was real, the struggle right? Was so real. the kids, you know, they still say the struggle is real, right? But we, we want to share with everyone who's listening, you know, whether mm -hmm. they're in their cars or watching online, you know, something that you struggled with and it could be together it could be individually yeah. and and how you overcame it right because there's people listening and they might relate they might think oh well you know we heard their story yeah and they were raised in charity their generations pastors and you know they, yeah, yeah. they didn't struggle with nothing yeah so hit look us. at them you know, you know <laughs> come on and keep it real <laughs> keep all right, it right. All right. <laughs> 100 all right um i mean going along with the whole like fatherless generation that was almost us you know and uh there was a time in our marriage actually year three where we were separated for uh, nah. better, that, that whole year yeah so uh, a whole year wow and, and uh, I mean 
I had the divorce papers ready to go. All I needed was a signature and Sharia, you had paid off a divorce attorney. I mean, so we talk wow. about being on the verge, like we oh, were yeah, yeah. And you invested some money. Right. You need to get I that mean, back. we're already invested. <laughs> 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 we gotta reach out to that guy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. But um, with, with that being said, you know, I would say that was the most wow. real uh, struggle. struggle. And I'll let you kind of share more because, you know, you have a lot. You, I love the way you word it. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Sharia's got that, you know. I think, Sharia, we got to bring you on. Look at you. Seriously. <laughs> She's got that. Sing She's us got a that song high. next time. Come on. <laughs> um, I, for me, um, you, be real, right? Yeah, yeah, All yeah. Right. Come on. Um, for me. We'll have the beep, 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 beep. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, I didn't realize that I had a lot of anger inside. Wow. Um, not until COVID hit um, okay. is when I discovered that I had horrible anger issues. Wow. Okay. And why I say that is because, you know, not until COVID hit, we were busy. And so we could ignore mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. that was going on inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so COVID hits, everything gets shut down. So now all you have is some crying kids, you know, a sassy six year old daughter and then your <laughs> husband. Right. Yeah. And so you really can't go anywhere. Right. And you have to face it. Yeah. You have y to yeah. face it. And so um, during that time, um, I was dealing with anger wow. and um, I would get very, very angry. I, I didn't even realize that I had that on the inside. And it took a lot, a lot of prayer, a lot. There was times where I would tell him, just leave me alone, like, leave me alone. I need to be by myself. Mm -hmm. And I would shut my door and I would cry to the top of my wow. lungs. And um, and so I. God's gotten me through that. Thank you, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> because it's a horrible feeling. It's horrible. And um, and so that's something that I've God's helped me with. So how would you overcome that? So, you know, just really your wife pour, pouring into me. Um, that's yep. cool. That's cool. So yeah. you have to be vulnerable. Right. Basically, you right. That's what you did to overcome. You basically, you know, a lot of times everybody knows you're angry mm -hmm. except you. Mm -hmm. You right. really do know, <laughs> but you almost get prideful, yeah. right? And you're like, yes. it's <laughs> y'all's problem. <laughs> you know? yes. So you have to get to a place that maybe you go to somebody. Well, first you have to recognize, man, maybe I am mm -hmm. angry, and right. then reach out to somebody that you trust. Is basically what you're saying, right? To, and allow them to go. Okay, girl, you're angry. You know, yeah. right? Let's let's help you here. So that's really good. I that's applaud cool. you for that. Yeah, that's a cool process. Yeah, I applaud you for that. That's really awesome. That's really, and it's awesome that you guys, how did you guys, uh, what did you guys do, you know, to overcome and get back, like to mend this back? Obviously the Bible is always talking about reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So how'd you guys, you know, how, cause you guys look happy now. Oh yeah. You know? You know, she, she's now, and another thing, her being angry with the way she lives got you nervous. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, it's a different little difference. Little She's girl, strong. You know, no strong. Not strong at all. You know, that may have explained angry. a few She's black like, eyes that I made. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm not going to hurt you, but I'm going to lift you. Like, <laughs> you know, I think you have a quote, Pastor, that says, marriage is brutal on selfish people. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, there were a lot of things that led up to that. One of them being that I, I finally saw that I was selfish and, and, mm. and it took uh, – accountability people in my life to say you know what mark like you're you're pretty selfish in a lot of your ways and so uh it, it took coming back to the cross and and really just uh breaking that down and saying all right god like i need you now more than ever to come in and and change you know change me and and help me become more like you you know and, wow. and uh you got to share the part about you know you going there's a uh, part he wants you to share girl yeah that's, that's <laughs> what i really want you to, hear. He want you to say we, he, we all want to hear now we now i'm hear, like i want to hear that so part great. <laughs> that, that you haven't been you part. weren't at church right you didn't stop going to church and then what happened right so i had stopped going to church um you know during the time where we separated yeah um for it was about seven months yeah um you know, and I was always, I, I would say I was, you know, they call me the, the Christian girl in school. So I love Jesus, right. you yeah, know, yeah. and so I just didn't have those like rebellious mm -hmm. stages. Like yeah. at a young, it, it, that happened to you later. Right. Later. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <It's wild>. delayed. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, not going to church for seven months, um, people reaching out to me, you know, that really cared about me. I was ignoring them. And um, one day I'm driving in my car and I'm like, okay, God, I know you're speaking to me, but it's, you know, because I've blocked you out is why I can't hear you. And mm -hmm. I, 
I remember sitting in my car and I'm driving and I told him, I said, I surrender to you. I surrender to you. And I told him, I said, I'm done. I'm done living like this. And so there was an, an exit coming up and I was going to this church. I hadn't been to this church and I went. And um, as soon as I you know, walked in and I hadn't cried in seven months, I was yeah. hard. Mm. As soon as I walked into that place, I could feel God's presence and just rocked me. So wow. I, I started weeping and um, I went up to the altar and long story short, this um, woman comes up to me and she is from El Salvador. Wow. Mind you, I don't have a wedding ring on. I, you know, <laughs> trying to look as single as possible, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and with an angry face. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and she comes up to me, and I had my eyes closed. And she said, she said, baby, she said, God told me to tell you that it's time for you to go back to your husband and that from this day forward, you will never be the same again. Mm. And that wow. wrecked me. That, wow. that was it. It wow. almost wrecked like, me right now. <laughs> <laughs> And so, you know, for I remember I, you know, I I knew that I couldn't just call him and expect, oh, he'll come back to me, you know, and yeah. that took time and, you know, a lot of counseling and, That's cool. you know. So and you guys so, have, w you would, uh, could you say that marriage works if you work it? Mm -hmm. Right. You, you had to put some work into it, right? Lots and of so, work. <laughs> lots of work. And, and hey, it's a, it's, it's a lifelong process. Right. You know, because it's always becoming one. You know, it's not like become one, you know, you're like becoming. So it's a consistent right. work, you know, consistently you guys are getting older, things change, you know, baby season, no baby season, mm -hmm. teenager season, you know, mm -hmm. right. which, you know, praise the Lord, you know, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 like, let's not talk about that right now. But um, <laughs> man, that's so cool. I really appreciate you guys uh, being vulnerable, even mm -hmm. on the show to share, because there's probably someone out there who's at their wits end in their marriage yeah. or even like, like angry that there's a lot of angry people. yeah like i think i think there there was that in both of your lives you know For because sure. it took mark saying that you know i'm being selfish right now and sharia to to say you know what even in these times even after my marriage is restored and everything's going good that you know i think that's part of what starting where you are if what yeah. we've been talking about so much is that you can you can technically quote unquote be good but still have that time to be vulnerable you know be yes. honest with ourselves and say okay there's not a moment that we've arrived that there's still things that god's dealing with us internally Absolutely. Right. you know amen i just want people to understand that it's okay to have issues right it's okay to say hey well i struggle with addiction or i struggle with this or that whatever that may look like but realize that starting this path with god it can happen right there then and there right yeah and so all it took was her coming to you know uh, an opportunity a divine appointment i believe where she met this person from el salvador right and and that people often ask like you know how did your marriage start coming back and i'm like honestly it was all god you yeah, know because yeah. you're like big shout out to el salvador they're like they become missionaries yeah. they're like uh, you know We're 20 moving. years later <laughs> 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 they become missionaries in Salvador because yeah. they're like, you don't understand. <laughs> Jesus at oh Salvador. <laughs> you know? But I mean, that's what they're saying. It's Savior. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's super dope, oh man. Goodness. That's super good. Uh, we're going to yes. move on to the next segment, yeah. um, which, would, I mean, I think it perfectly applies to the what we're speaking about right now, right? Mm. Generation. So the next one, we like to call it Dear Younger Me, right? Mm. So we shared, you shared a little bit about your lives before and how you grew up you know so we want you all to take a take a moment right take us back to the younger version of yourself whether it was you know a year or two years ago or the you know teenage you right what was that like what was mark you know doing what was sharia doing and uh, what piece of advice would you give to that younger version of yourself well, I'll start. I, I uh, was pursuing music at the time. You know, I still am active as a musician, but uh, I wanted that you rock and roll. That look. <laughs> <laughs> you have that look. You have that look. I'm saying, like, if you didn't play music, I'd buy you a guitar. But there go ahead. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could still buy me a guitar. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> <But> <laughs> he slipped like, that in there just in case. Like, you know? Just like, like, put like, that still, plug in there. Uh, <laughs> I would play it. I <laughs> But, uh, you know, I was pursuing the whole rock and roll thing and, and coming from, you know, being a selfish guy, I really liked the attention that, you know, playing in a band mm -hmm. and music got, you You know, no matter where you went, uh, you just got t attention from anyone and everyone, right? Yeah. And so, um, 
um, I, I didn't realize that that was really what was fueling an issue that I had with lust. You see what I'm saying? And yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and so what I, what I would go back and say, like, and, and to backtrack a little bit, my, my sister would always say, Mark, like, you're like the star child. You know, you, you love Jesus all these years and all this stuff. You were in church. And I recently told her, I said, Lauren, like, the difference was you weren't ashamed to live wild and, and crazy right whereas i masked it with church mm -hmm. man that kind of gets me choked wow. up but you see what i'm saying like i masked it with being in church but really our lives were not that much different wow and, and so i would just go back and tell the younger self to say how hey, old were you um, how, who, 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 how old was that mark you would talk to right now uh anywhere from like 18 21 all right so 18, right. 18 year old listen 18 year old mark and you right. show up and what do you tell him I would say, hey, bro, uh, nice hair. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 hey. He's had hair. I started from birth. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's like, I was born this way. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so you would say, hey, bro, nice hair. No, I would say, hey, bro, uh, nice hair, but it's time to get real, man. It's time to like unmask yourself and let, you know, let's let's attack these issues. We know you got lust issues. We know you got selfish issues. We know that pride has consumed you. It's time to like get real and come to the cross because for a long time, like wow. I said, I love Jesus, mm -hmm. but really I wasn't living like it. You wow. just learned the phrase. Right. Mm -hmm. I kind of I yeah. kind of learned the, the, the routine and gone, gone through the motions and stuff, you know, yeah. and exactly what yeah. to say and how to mm -hmm. say it and you know people that think happens that a lot he's got yeah. it together you know <laughs> sure sure so wow wow wow, wow. okay <laughs> so, what's going on what year are you going to girl i'll go back she's like two years she's like well, three years <laughs> <She's> ago <like, laughs> <laughs> this week last week actually um i want to say between the ages of 12 to 15 okay um i dealt with uh being bullied and um i wanted to wow. commit suicide a lot of times um, wow. and um, I would tell the younger version of me um, to know your worth and to um, read I would uh, write scripture down and yeah. um, post them mm -hmm. sticky notes mm -hmm. and I would read them and I would look at myself in the mirror and tell you know to tell that person that you are beautiful you are wonderfully made you mm -hmm. you were created by god and you know his image and and so yeah um we have a, a, a lot of teens right now that are dealing with with suicide and you know like i said at the beginning not knowing who they are mm -hmm. you yeah. know wanting to be somebody else and so um yeah what would you say to somebody that is like listening and they're thinking man i I'm contemplating suicide, and maybe they're your age now, you know, but they're thinking they don't want to live anymore. What would you tell them? Um, I would tell them that, um, you know, that, again, that you do have a purpose here and that God loves you so much. Uh -huh. And that, um, sorry, I try not to, because I can see myself from when I was Let's go ahead. that age. <laughs> it's okay. You can cry. You can cry on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> and that um, you're never alone. He's always there, mm -hmm. you know, and all you have to do is just, just talk, you know. And I have young girls ask me, well, how do you talk? How do you talk to him? I'm like, it's like we're having a conversation mm -hmm. right here, yeah. you know. And he's listening, and he will meet you and find somebody that you can talk to mm -hmm. that will pour into you. And so, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, wow. Hey, let me ask you a question. Um, what you know because we're doing dear younger me but right. i i want to do dear younger me right before you started having the marital issues that led you probably to your mistakes what would you tell that couple you know because you didn't get to the years of you know it wasn't like you woke up one morning and we're leaving you know mm -hmm. it probably right. was a, a a subtle gradual gradual yeah. thing and so what would you say to that couple? What would you say to that husband? And then I want you to go, right? What would you say to that husband pre that so that that could have been avoided? Right. You get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Um, I, would, I would tell, you know, any husband out there, especially myself pr before the separation, yeah. um, pay attention to detail. You know, pay attention to uh, 
you know, your wife and, and not just love languages, but um, I feel like even these personality tests that, you know, yeah. I've been taking lately uh, really helped us learn a lot about each other, you know, not only ourselves, wow. but uh, I feel like all of that factors in and and, and most importantly, um, you know, kind of talking about the whole like mask thing and, and not really like being in, rooted being in my you. word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, you know, you always say like, your relationship with God always dictates your relationship with your wife and your spouse. And so I would look back and say, hey, you know, my, I, I was, I said, Jesus, I love you, but you know, I, I, there were still areas in my life that I didn't quite surrender to him, you know? I wow. didn't quite hand That's over. Mm-hmm. And and so that, that I lived off of that, you know? I lived off of, um, you know, maybe believing some lies uh, whether it was about myself, about our marriage, you know, uh, and and man, I'm I'm learning firsthand that that could really mess a situation up if you just believe one lie from the enemy. Uh, you really, you know, it gives you that lens or perspective, and you yeah. just begin to live out out of that when it really yeah. was a lie the whole time, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. because belief drives emotions that always drive behavior. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know? So what you believe kind of creates some type of emotion and those emotions always drive your behavior you know mm-hmm. so what would you say Sharia, to uh to that woman pre yeah mm-hmm. pre separation i would say find somebody uh another woman to hold you accountable and why i say that is because i was totally against that <laughs> wow. um, mark would try so hard to get me to hey let's sit down and let's you know get some counseling you know and no, nobody needs to know my business. I was that person yeah, and didn't realize like, hey, you know, I look back, I'm like, sure, if you would have done that, it would have saved so much trouble (laughs) and heartbreak. (laughs) And so now I'm like, you know, I, you know, talk to other young couples that are going to get married. I'm like, do the premarital counseling. I tell, you know, even my sister now that she's engaged, I said, hey, get some find that woman and get premarital counseling yeah it will rock you and your marriage will rock (laughs) definitely yeah Mm -hmm. man that's so good so basically you need that other perspective you want to listen um and it's super i know this is going to be super random but it's kind of cute when uh your daughter uh draws something and she puts it (laughs) your daughter rayma drew something and put it (laughs) it under the 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 door door, like (laughs) he's like you know we're over here having an interview crying everything i look to the side all i see is (laughs) an art piece you know (laughs) right under the door that's hilarious man so let's do the final one yeah Um, and yo thank you so much you know i mean hey listen i I, we need a this is real Mm. button you know because (laughs) let me tell you something y'all kept it real um we've had a lot of interviews and talk to a lot of people, but I gotta tell you something. This is one of those interviews where I enjoyed very, very much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I mean, obviously, you know, I love you guys very much. I have a heart for you guys. You know, walked with you guys through a lot of things. For sure. But just to hear your growth and uh, see, uh, I guess, see you say things that I wouldn't have seen you say before, but now you're very open. And you're gonna say there's gonna be a lot of lives that are gonna be impacted through what you've said tonight or mm-hmm. today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So next we're gonna yeah. go with. Now we go real serious, kind of like. Yeah. You know, like, like so, saying, so what's up? <laughs> 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 okay. No, but I think it, it's great stuff, and I, you know, at least for me, you know, who's not married, I think all of those things, those, um, the core belief of all of those realizations and moments you know that it applies to everyone absolutely know? so uh moving on we're gonna go into the next and the last one of pastor's favorites i think is you think you know me <laughs> yeah think you know me because <laughs> uh, you know we gave you all a little bit of a snippet of you know what what they look like for those who are just listening on the radio um but you know even you just listening you hear them saying oh they're you know generations pastors yeah 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 they've been in ministry for so long or you know you guys work out or have great style all of that so there might be you know some misconceptions that people have had about y'all yeah. right and and share with us what are they yeah and i'm gonna add a little to uh-huh. that so they could get a uh you know the the whole thought and the idea behind that is because we live in such a social media Insta. i don't even know what to call it Insta Insta moment. Everything. Insta moment, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and like Insta glimpse. you know highlight reels. you know i've, I've shown <laughs> yeah. i guess pictures in the back where i go and everybody's thinking oh this picture meant that and then i tell people really what happened in that picture mm-hmm. right and and that's what we do we look at a picture and we just 
they don't even people don't even take the time to try to even know you or talk to you they just say something and most of the time it's in it's inaccurate it's not even right you know right. and so um since you guys do you guys experience that is there you know you think you know me moment where somebody says something and it's actually wrong um you had a good one <laughs> go ahead <laughs> <laughs> Um, I can, I'll go with, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> um, you know, I've had people tell me they're like, um, well, you know, you have the money, you could do it, you know, because of the way I dress or yeah. little do they know it's, you know, you know, we have our moments where we've, we've struggled and yeah, yeah. it's been, you know, like hard. We've had our hard moments of like, how are we going to pay this? Or how are we going to pay that? Or, yeah. you know, and people don't even know, like they look at you and they're like, oh, she must have money because of how she dresses. Yeah. You just know how to put it together. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just because you broke or struggling, don't mean you got to look like it. Yeah. You want me to tear a hole in this shirt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to prove it to That'd you? That'd be pretty dope though. <laughs> I know right now they come with the Oh my God. <laughs> but little do you know, I grabbed my husband's t-shirt and rocked it. Or, yeah. you know? <laughs> hey, so. It's like, if you work out, yeah. let, let me give you the success <laughs> tips. If you work out, you're so focused on the muscle that you don't even see the shirt. <laughs> you, know, you don't even see what I'm rocking. Before you say that, here's a note to husbands. If, if you work out, be sure to hide your favorite t-shirts from your wife because uh. she'll be sure to cut it into a crop top. Oh my, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. What about you, Mark? Have you ever had anything like that? Yeah, so, um, you know, I think a lot of people misunderstand my uh, excitement and energy, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> she's laughing over here. She's like, mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, um, you know there, there was a moment where uh, I you know when we do worship I, I just I just a very passionate person I like playing with passion you know yeah. um, just just how I'm wired I can't yeah. stop myself you know yeah, <laughs> and so yeah. and so with that being said you know I remember a, a pastor calling me down and say hey, you know he was honoring me for whatever reason I don't remember but he said you know you might see Mark having a good time jumping up and down and, and with his guitar but <laughs> you have no idea what the struggle and the things that Mark has been through to get to this point you know yeah and so I, I believe that I'm a very energetic person because you know of all the things I'm just excited about God you know yeah uh, I'm just excited about you know where where he's brought us and Come here on. with this great people all Come around on. us you have a are, praise you know, in your lips yeah <laughs> and you want to continually that's what happens though yeah, when yeah. something yeah. happens on the inside right right you don't want to stop shouting about that's it, it. You know? it's that's like winning it. the lottery I've never seen a real calm <laughs> you, you imagine if you would have won the million there, dollars, bad. you know, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to say nothing. No, yeah. you're, gonna, you're probably going to have to, like, your cheeks are going to hurt uh -huh. from, like, you know, the big smile and everything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because we right. get that all the time, you know, as Get Rap family. Exactly. We, we go to places uh, yeah. and they look at us like we're crazy. They're like, oh, yeah. they must be drunk. <laughs> right. I, I, I remember yeah. going with, like, a, a group, I guess, uh, I forgot who, maybe it was, was Ashley's birthday. wedding. Oh, uh, wedding? Yeah, oh yeah, wedding. yeah, it was Ashley's wedding. And we all went and we, like, and so I think they had like some <laughs> drinks and some yeah. other people and and we were on like this life. We were yeah. just on life. We and, but we looked drunk. The, we looked the, more the drunk people than people who were drinking. <laughs> yeah. We were. That's you know, wild. you know, sometimes our lives are, are, are disruptive. You know, our praise is disruptive, you Come know, on. just because, you know, God has brought, you know, like you and you, all of us from such a mm -hmm. crazy lifestyle Come in the on. past that we can't help but be like David and dance and, oh, and just yeah, celebrate. Yeah. Right now I was going to shout. Know? Come on. <laughs> I was gonna go into that whole. You, preacher could, you mode. can love God and dress nice. You could love God and be crazy and wild too. Like you know what I mean. So so many times people think that you know, like Pastor was saying from the very beginning, that they're young, right? Why are you giving your life to God at yeah. this age? You know, but you know all of the wonderful things that you know, quote unquote, the world tries to paint you that are great. Absolutely. They're even greater in God's come on, world. Man. Amen. Hey, once you go first class, you don't want to go coach. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's just a real thing. Like on the cool, like uh -huh. like once you go heaven. You don't want to read. You don't want to live in Earth no more, yeah. man. Paul was betwixt. Right. He's like, man, I want to go. <laughs> yeah, and if you think that you've gone and then you've gone back, it's because you haven't really truly tasted it. You know, Ooh, that's so good. Yeah. That's so good. good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm so 
I, I can't tell you how many times like we've been at a youth camp or retreat yeah. and other youth pastors or leaders come up to us and just apologize for being rude or you know yeah, yeah, yeah. like I'm sorry yeah, you know? you're like rebuke <laughs> I'm, like, I'm kidding we got uh, 30 seconds tell them where they can find you guys as generation pastors and what night and a little bit of that you got 28 seconds you've got it find us on, on Instagram uh, yep. we're at Get Rap Students yep. every Wednesday night at 7pm right here in the north part of Houston Spring Texas come on through and what do you guys do? You guys have a blast out there or what? Oh, man. It, it's not. Uh, it, I mean, we have the most crazy nights of the week. I mean, super cool. All kinds of crowd surfing, all kinds of praise dancing, and a real message that will transform you, you know? Mm-hmm. Awesome. And so, you know what? We just want to thank you so much for being a part of This Is Real. Mark and Sharia, you guys had an incredible story. You guys have shared so much that it's going to impact lives. We're so excited about what's going to happen at This Is Real. You guys stay tuned for what is going to get even hotter. Yeah. Juan Martinez from This Is Real. And I'm Stephanie Rave, and we're so glad you joined us. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you get notified every single time we have a new episode. And don't forget, in Houston, Texas, on 100.7 FM, every single Saturday night, we're on the airwaves from 6.30 to 7.30, man, with real people, real problems, real solutions. The show is rocking. Amen. But not only that, not only is the show rocking, we're also reaching 53 cities, 51 state and county jails and prisons. And what we're doing is we're bringing the word to them. We're bringing them some laughter fire. and some good times and some fire. Amen. And so uh, for that, we need some partners. So if you want to partner with us, please click on the link below. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Hashtag this is real or on any other platforms. Pastor Juan Martinez. Hey, that's a wrap. Peace.